Shalom, Chavarim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live here out here at Westminster, here in front of the Parliament building. Uh, a group of po protesters, in fact, they're probably a good thousand, maybe two thousand protesters here against nuclear nuclear arms that the Prime Minister, Theresa May, is proposing to spend 205 billion pounds for more nuclear arms. And this is really a shock to to hear this, but at the same time, we already know there's been all kinds of propaganda going on, especially by the United States, where Barack Obama has falsely accused Russia of arming itself with 40 more intercontinental ballistic missiles, and as a result, had promised to bring in more arms, more troops into Eastern Europe. But of course, we find out, if you look at the timeline on the news, we find out that, in fact, it was the Obama administration that actually built up major military arms in Eastern Europe, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, before President Putin actually spoke about adding four more intercontinental ballistic missiles. And now today, here in Britain, the people have come together in a large number to protest adding more nuclear weapons to Britain's arsenal. As one of the pamphlets that we got stated there, the money could be better spent on education and other things of this nature in Britain's infrastructure instead of trying to tear down and kill people by the tens of thousands and even millions. Uh, no doubt if a nuclear war broke out, it would be devastating globally to everything that there is. All kinds of people are here and behind me. We'll be talking to some of those people to get their perspective as well on what they think about this issue. And as well, we'll be sharing with you uh, all kinds of things that we can, especially in light of all the disasters that are happening. And in fact, our biggest concern is, is that what is what has given the momentum for the British government to be able to get this passed is the terrorist attacks that are happening throughout Europe. France and Nice, France, just the other day, 80 something people actually killed. And then again, we have the coup that took place in a nuclear armed country, Turkey, where 200 and some odd people were killed, and it's believed to be, according to Erdogan, the president there, it is actually believed to be an American-backed coup that happened on his country. But nonetheless, there are nuclear weapons in this region, which brings about a major concern that what if these nuclear weapons got into other hands? There is a threat of terrorism all over Europe, all over the world, in fact. I'm Stephen Benoon, reporting to you live here in Britain, right here, Westminster, the parliament and behind us. Shalom. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We're here at the Trident protest today against the nuclear weapons, especially with MP uh, Shepard, uh, Mr. Tommy Shepard here. And your stand is against the nuclear weapons, especially after we hear that uh, Theresa May just authorized 205 billion pounds in order to arm even more nuclear weapons, and I'm assuming uh, that they're using Russia as the threat right now. What is your take on this? And of course, we stand with you. I'll say it right up front. We stand with you when it comes to nuclear weapons. We think we should have learned from from uh, what happened with the United States and uh, Hiroshima and Japan. Yeah, my, you know, my, my, my take on it is I, I want to have a nuclear-free Scotland, a nuclear-free Britain, a nuclear-free world, and I believe that rather than rearm at this time, we should be taking the lead in the world and showing that we can begin to phase out our nuclear weapons and join with others internationally to try and make that happen across the globe. In the same way we've done with chemical and biological weapons. I mean, no one would suggest that the response to a threat of that is that everybody suddenly gets them and prepares to deploy them. Uh, of course you don't. So nuclear weapons don't make us safer. They make the world much more dangerous. And I want to see real steps towards uh, getting rid of them. Rearmament and creating a new, a brand new fleet of nuclear capable submarines is, is not the right way to go. Unfortunately, we don't really know many of the details here because the government, the, the entire debate is about half a page of A4. It's really political grandstanding by the government to try and put the Labour opposition in a, on, a, on a sticky wicket and uh, it's disgraceful politics really. They, they won't tell us how much they cost, they won't tell us who the enemies are, they won't tell us who, who we're going to use them against. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a pathetic debate typical of much of what passes for political discourse in this country at the moment. One other question I'd like to ask you, uh, Mr. Shepard, is when we, we did a story, a deep story on Russia with Putin, with the 40 ICBMs that he said that he was going to build, uh, and of course uh, the Obama administration was saying they were sending in as a response all the heavy equipment, 
but Israeli News Live, and we're more balanced in this issue with Russia and the United States, but we actually saw the evidence ourselves. We'd already recorded the heavy tanks were going in even before Putin had spoke about the 40 ICBMs. Now, do you feel like that Putin is actually a threat, or do you feel like that he's being pushed into this situation? Well, I, I mean, I'm sure that Russia has interests that at times will conflict with this country's interests. But the way to solve this is through international diplomacy rather than preparing for war. And I am rather worried that there's a bunch of people in the government side here who are trying to uh, exacerbate, caricature and, and uh, exaggerate the threat and the intentions that are there in order to justify this incredibly wasteful program of nuclear rearmament and you know it's just not the way to create a safer world if i was in russia or if i was in america i'd be arguing exactly the same thing somebody somewhere has got to blink somebody has got to take the first step and we should do that now that we have a chance thank you very much it's a pleasure again ask these questions how can it be a deterrent has it deterred north korea getting the bomb has it deterred what happened in syria in libya in every country across the world where there has been plenty of wars and plenty of killing since the end of the Second World War. No, it has not. It is not a deterrent. It is simply an excuse by the people who run this country to try and retain their membership of a select and privileged club in this world. That it was, that's what it's about. People who can't get over the fact that we are no longer the British Empire, that we need to have a new role in the world that is not built on being a nuclear power, but being a crusader for peace throughout the world. And I hope those are the arguments, those are the arguments, my friends, that, that we are putting tonight. To say that nuclear weapons is a deterrent would be... Another question I would like to ask you about as well. One of the things we covered on Israeli News Live is that when uh, Barack Obama sent in all the troops into the uh, eastern part of uh, Europe, in Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, etc., he justified this by saying that Vladimir Putin had, was bringing in 40 more ICBMs, and we had actually saw, through the weeding out all the propaganda in between both sides guilty of propaganda, but we also found out that the Obama administration had already sent the tanks into Latvia about two months before Putin ever even said he was going to build new ICBMs. What, what is your thoughts in regards to this type of situation here? Well, I think that uh, the, the presence of um, weapons of mass destruction is used in a, a sort of political shorthand to justify anything. So uh, it's, it, the last wars we were involved in, the, the Iraq war, is all about finding weapons of mass destruction of some, of some sorts. And it's the same with nuclear weapons. As soon as someone mentions the risk of ICBMs or, or anything more serious like that, then uh, it's always a justification for increasing hostilities. And it's, it's used as a, a high-scale bartering chip to try and get uh, credibility on the world stage. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Not still. Thank you. What is your thought? One last question. What is your thought with Theresa May saying just recently that she would be willing to use nuclear weapons? I, I, I had no idea until just today that she had actually made this statement. Well, it personally makes me feel completely sick that anyone would um, advance that, that argument that they would be prepared to use them. I mean, this, to me, there's something deeply psychological wrong with any human being who can threaten that sort of uh, action on, on other human beings. Uh, whether she means it, I, I don't know, or whether she's saying it for political reasons, who, who knows? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolute hypocrisy that in the weeks that we had the Chilcot inquiry, where the shadow of nuclear weapons took us into a war that was fundamentally immoral and wrong and illegal, that we are now debating nuclear weapons in this country. For one second, let's imagine what would happen if this debate was happening in France now, what our government would be saying. Or take it even further, what would our government be saying if this debate was happening in Russia? Or even further, if, what would our government be saying if this debate happened in Iran? Our government has tried so hard to stop the development of nuclear weapons in other countries and fails to see their own hypocrisy when they build, when they reinvest in, our, in nuclear weapons in the UK and reinvest this money into an immoral weapon.